Good morning. Uh, today I'm going to take a break from uh, filming uh, experiments and talk about uh, using the BioCell as a research tool. Now this is something that's not obvious until you start working with the titanium dioxide and then it becomes pretty obvious fast. But in science, the simpler the system, the easier it is to analyze and understand. And that's why uh, modern science is so reductive. It keeps wanting to break everything down into simpler systems so that it can analyze it and understand it easier. And uh, when it comes to the biocell, it's, it's the very most simple uh, battery that there is because it's basically just two electrodes with some titanium dioxide and water between them. So, and because it's such a simple cell, uh, it also produces very consistent results. As long as you use the same mixture of titanium dioxide and water between the same two electrode types, you're going to get exactly the same result every time. And so that consistency gives you a baseline for doing your research on. And as long as you just change one factor at a time, you know that whatever factor you change is responsible for the results uh, that you got. And you can just compare those results to your baseline and then you'll know whether you've got an improvement or not. So let's say you're working on electrodes and you're developing a, a carbon uh, electrode to use with your batteries. Well, you just switch out your carbon for your baseline carbon, which is graph oil in my case, and then you can uh, see uh, measure your cell and you'll know instantly whether your electrode is better than graph oil or worse than graph oil. And same thing with electrolytes. Since it contains no electrolytes at all, any electrolyte you put in there is going to cause a, a change in the cell and then you just measure your cell and compare it to your baseline. And you can know, you can take electrolytes, try different electrolytes, different uh, uh, concentrations of electrolytes and uh, test your electrolytes. Same thing with your separators. You can try different types of separators and see what the results are. Just compare them to your baseline. So now we get to the, <coughs> the third thing is uh, the factors involved uh, in measurements uh, that you need uh, to, s to really study uh, uh, really all batteries, but in particular uh, for this one I'm, t I'm talking about the, the biocell, uh, which <coughs> the first one is uh, your, your pH over time. Now, um, uh, what's his name? Kev Wall, uh, Walcroft, Walcroft, I think is his name, yeah. Uh, he was my first subscriber, and he, he's already taken pH uh, tests on his electrodes during charge and discharge uh, with um, litmus paper. Uh, I mean, that's a crude way to do it, but he showed that there definitely is a pH change over time when you're charging and discharging uh, your batteries, in, which most people don't even don't even consider at all okay and then uh, since the biocell is a thermoelectric device really it's pulling in heat from the environment and turning it into electricity I obviously need to uh, take the temperature uh, changes over time on charge and discharge and of course everybody is already doing voltage and amperage over time on the charge and discharge so that one's uh, that's the one that most people are, are testing for uh, in, in this case, uh, the biocell is pulling oxygen out of the air and, uh, and it's going to be putting carbon dioxide into the air once it gets fully more developed. So I need uh, carbon dioxide and oxygen sensors uh, and measurements over time. So <coughs> what I've come up with here is this is I'm going to have to build this. It's a way that I can take all of these uh, measurements and uh, and record them over time and what I'm planning on doing is taking a glass dome and, and putting it on a, a stiff board some type of non-porous plastic or something I want to stay away from metal because the uh, metal will transfer heat in and out of the in of the uh, environment here which I want to have a controlled environment as much as possible so anyway I'm taking a glass dome and uh, then the battery would be mounted inside the dome and you would, the wires for testing the volts and amps and stuff would go down to a, a, um, a sensor that plugs into the, the computer. And uh, Kev also has a really nice setup for this. He's using a, um, 
I forget the name of it, but it's a sensor made for testing uh, computer batteries and un uninterrupted uh, power supplies and things like that. So it, it plugs right into the USB port on your battery and then you can run the, the cables and then you can set the load uh, to whatever you want, which is really nice because you can use real small batteries and, and just get a small load on it. So, and that same system also has a, has a temperature system in it and it's possible that I could move this, use a long USB cable, move this inside the dome and uh, mount the uh, battery right on top of the heat sink of, of this thing right here which presently has a, a fan on it. And so I might be able to combine the temperature sensor sensors uh, with this. If not, they can, I'll have to run the temperature systems and you need to take the temperature of the, of the cathode and the anode uh, on this and then run that to a meter and the same thing the pH would have to be tested on the inside of the battery uh, because that's uh, and then you need a pH two pH sensors one next to the anode one next to the cathode and then you'll have to go to a meter and then the same thing with your oxygen and, and uh, carbon dioxide uh, sensors and ideally they should actually be inside the battery too but uh, that's going to be a little harder to do they don't uh, they do make some sensors that are, are big around that size and so you could put those in a dome and uh, then just take that from the dome and then uh, another reason for using a glass uh, case over the whole thing would be that the titanium dioxide is also photosensitive so uh, you know it could be used as a and they're using it already to make the solar uh, collectors and stuff so I'd be able to shine uh, a light inside the heat lamp, USB, uh, UV, whatever, in there and then test uh, the effects of that on, on the battery. And I'm going to plan on sealing the, the glass dome to the uh, base plate with glycerin, which won't dry out and, and glue the thing together, but it will seal off the, the air really good. So um, anyway, that's, uh, that's my plan for the future, and I've already ordered... Uh, I've already ordered the uh, the dummy load uh, thing here that goes in the plugs into the computer, um, and I've already the, the software for that is free. By the way, it costs about thirty bucks, thirty five bucks for the uh, for the measurement device, and then uh, and, and then you download the software for free. So uh, it's called EB Tester software, and uh, I'll see if I can get a uh, picture and post the. Uh, the uh, sensor part of it at the end of the video here. Alright, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.